What are y'all taking me in for? What did I do? Operating vehicle while under the influence of alcohol no, or drugs or other no, controlled no, substances. No. A belligerently intoxicated woman is arrested in Ohio after crashing a vehicle while transporting a patient with special needs. Kelly, okay. I'm gonna have you step out with me, okay? We got, no, we gotta go. Not. I know. I gotta get you out of here, though, okay? No, oh, no, you're not gonna do that. No, yeah. No. Kelly, we're not leaning back down. All this before she blatantly... Kelly Barton, then 48 years old, was put in a dangerous position by a series of strange happenings. She was on the clock and transporting a patient with special needs when the accident occurred. Kelly slammed into a lamppost while driving. Kelly's untidy and shaky appearance was immediately noticeable to the responding police officers. I don't know what this is. She shredded the back of that. She's she in the back pop, of my car. Well, she popped both tires, so oh, I'm afraid she hit something in the ash. So, yep. Uh, I guess it's going to be by the roundabout. Uh, that's what I think too. <laughs> well, you're saying she came to Glendale Milford? Yeah, it'd be up. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's here's what she told me. The driver is in her car. Okay. So I came to an empty vehicle. All right. The owner of this facility or whatever it is, they they transport special. Car for R32, squad dispatch 106. This driver is in the real drive. For 93 year old female, semi conscious. Kelly initially disputed responsibility for the collision, but it was later discovered that alcohol was a contributing factor. She denied that she had ever driven under the influence, despite the fact that she was employed as a caregiver. However, video surveillance from a neighboring gas station positively identified her as the driver. As a result, she was accused of driving under the influence while transporting the sick patient, and she also faced charges of ignoring her duty. Your driver is someone that stays at a shelter? Huh? Your driver is somebody who stays at a shelter? My co-worker. She's a co-worker. She, okay. But I'm the driver. That's my car. <laughs> she in no, the no, 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 no. I'm talking about this one. This one, yeah, she stays in she a stays shelter. She stays in a shelter. She just okay. got the job. Yeah, she just got We're trying here. to figure out a way. If we got to get her home, we got to figure out I'll a, get her. a I'll safe take her. place to... Yeah, she's at the shelter. Nine north. So here's the situation. It's a unique one. We're going 31, okay. This Seven north. car belongs to a special needs driver service. They drive special needs people out to two of her places. The driver is heavily intoxicated she we're see we're going to go see what she hit in blue ash but the the gentleman that that was being driven said she hit a pole uh, the car's on only one wheel when i got here the car is turned off and this driver is sitting in the passenger seat of a co-worker's car that came to pick up a special needs person So, can we even go the old guy around? Nobody saw her driving. The lady picked her up, said my boss told me to come down here and... Kelly's behavior took a sudden and unwelcome turn as paramedics arrived to examine her. She started making sexual statements about the responding officers that shocked everyone. Multiple tests conducted by the police confirmed that Kelly's blood alcohol content was far higher than the permissible level. Yeah, let's go ahead and just get the roll squad. Hey, Kelly. Yes, sir. Can I have you step out here with me real quick? I'm I'll trying. help you out. I know. Here we go. Give me your hand, and I'm going to help I'm you out. I'm trying. I know you're trying, but I need you to work with me, okay? So this nice lady can give you a ride home, okay? So go ahead and step out for me, all right? Officers worked for several minutes to convince Barton to step out of the vehicle. Kelly, I know you're tired. Here, hold my hand, and I'm going to get you out, okay? So I need you to come out with me, all right? Because we're gonna work Listen, together, Kelly. okay? Listen to my partner, please. Yeah, come on, Kelly. Please, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you these shoes. All right. Kelly, knowing that her arrest was likely, persisted in her bold behavior, fighting off the cops as they tried to place her in the police car. At the end of the day, she was arrested for drunk driving. Kelly's arrest antics left a confusing tale in her trail, and if anyone thought she was brazen before, they were shocked by what they saw. Here, 18-year-old Skylar Floss gained notoriety after releasing a video in which she claimed to have fooled a police officer during a DUI stop. I got out of a DUI and got let off with a warning. <laughs> she bragged that she had avoided a DUI charge by using her wit and charm and that the police officer had even asked her out. A different picture emerged, however, after Deputy Stalvin of the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office revealed body cam footage. I blew a 3.8 and he let me off with a warning. 
and gave me his number and said we should meet for coffee or lunch. He was hot, so I'm getting lunch with him tomorrow. Skyler was pulled over by Deputy Stallman for weaving on the road, and Stallman voiced his fear that Skyler might be impaired by alcohol. He asked how she was doing and gave her a card with the department's information on it, rather than his personal number. I'm in the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. I pulled you over because you were weaving a little bit back there. Where are you coming from? Um, I was coming from my friend's house. I actually just got dumped. Okay. So I was like crying and like I'm really upset. Okay. Were you, were you on your phone and stuff too? I was trying to call him to get a hold of him because my heart hurts Okay. So well, I'm just concerned that you were weaving because of alcohol, but if you're on your phone, have you been drinking or anything tonight? No? Okay. Despite her protest, the officer acted professionally by issuing simply a warning for her own protection. Skyler's video not only showed her bragging about taking advantage of the cop's good nature, but also showed her making up a story about how she blew an astounding 3.8 on a breathalyzer, which could have killed her. As a matter of fact, she was never put through any sort of examination. Skyler's irresponsible behavior at a party before the event was revealed by new evidence. I like you're having a rough night, so I'm not going to add to that by writing you a ticket or anything, okay? So I'm just going to give you a warning. It's not a big deal. I just want to make sure you're okay. You were weaving a little bit, and I just want to make sure you're okay to operate the motor vehicle, and I believe you are. Um, so my information's right here on the front. The reason I stopped you here is on the back. Wherever you're headed, uh, get there safely, and I'm sorry you're having a bad night. Yeah, I'm just Okay. No, you're, you're fine. Yeah, well, no, you don't need to apologize. I mean, you were weaving a little bit with no traffic out. I just want to make sure you're okay. That's all. Skyler eventually confirmed her irresponsible behavior in her fabrication of stories for online attention. Neither she nor Deputy Stallman, who had behaved professionally throughout the incident, faced any legal consequences. The incident acted as a warning against making baseless charges and highlighted the significance of acting responsibly while behind the wheel. Lydia Badillo found herself in a precarious circumstance that differentiated her from the other people. During her effort to sneak two undocumented immigrants across the Mexican border, she was caught by Border Patrol agents. Fine, you're fine. Just come over here to this side. Do you have anything right here? Oh, no, you want no? to open it? Yeah. And right. Okay. They're my friends. Okay, and, and who are these? Both of my friends. Okay. Okay. Okay, are, are, are these legit? Because they look fake. I'm, I'm guessing because I met them at uh, Club Fuego. We're, oh. having, we're going to Agave. We're going to okay. go have some drinks. How long, how long have you met this? Yeah, down home from before. We met there at Club Fuego. Okay, okay. All right, just wait for me right here, okay? You don't I'm have anything? I'm looking at your eyes. <laughs> Sorry, sir. What, what? I'm looking at your eyes. Why? Because you look pretty handsome. Oh. <laughs> we need to call the cops. Can I just please? I have an autism kid in my house. Okay. Please, please. Do it. Please, please. Yes. Lydia resorted to an ill-conceived approach when her illegal business started to fall apart. She sought to seduce Officer Francis by asking him to wait while she lavished him with praises. This was a mistake on her part. Officer Francis, on the other hand, was not readily persuaded. He began to have doubts about the fake identification cards that Lydia had handed him. I, I had two investigators today, earlier. Okay, okay. Can do you, do it, uh, ma'am. In, in my car, ma'am. I just want to... Uh, Estos documentos por un momento de tiempo. Por un año. Por un año, okay. Pues son, son falsos, okay. Y tener documentos ¿Qué? en el estado de Texas es un delito. Las ID, a esta te sale a un señor, a tuya. Esta no me sale nada. Mm -hmm. Okay, so estas identificaciones son falsas. Mm -hmm. Okay. After conducting further research, he discovered that both of the IDs were forged, exposing Lydia's deceptive plan. The two women who were traveling with her were revealed to be undocumented immigrants hailing from El Salvador who were caught up in a murky human trafficking operation. These victims were held captive in debt bondages where they were compelled to perform forced labor and subjected to sexual exploitation in order to repay their traffickers. Ahora, yo lo que le quiero dar a entender a ustedes de que, so it's, it's clear what's going on now. Mm -hmm. We already passed that. You, you, you had two undocumented people in the vehicle. We're passed that. Yeah, already is mi culpa. Man. Okay? You're under arrest for human smuggling. No, sir. Turn around. Please. Turn around. Okay. Todo por yo manejar. Turn around. I'll separate your uh, arms. Lydia was taken into custody without delay, while the two Salvadorian ladies were deported back to their native country, potentially saving them from years of unspeakable torment. The ill-advised attempt that Lydia made to charm her way out of trouble failed tragically, as Officer Francis stayed unwavering in his commitment to unfor- God dang it, fuck.
The ill-advised attempt that Lydia made to charm her way out of trouble failed tragically, as Officer Francis stayed unwavering in his commitment to enforcing the law and protecting people who are susceptible to being exploited. Balance? Um, I do have an autoimmune disease yeah. called Bechet syndrome. Okay. Yes. Bechet syndrome? Bechet syndrome. Um, the last time I was diagnosed, I was about the third person in New Mexico to have it. Okay. Um, it's very similar to lupus. Okay. All right. I'm going to have you try these tests as best you can, and we'll go from there, okay? Yes, sir. Do you feel comfortable walking in those shoes? Yep. Does your autoimmune disease or whatever it is, does it, does it affect your ability to walk in balance? Um, at times, I do get lesions inside of my intestines. I did go to the doctor last week for a lesion that I had. Okay, and did they give you something for it? Is, do you think it's better? They haven't done anything? They, they the unexpected meeting between Brooke Teague and a police officer took a fascinating turn that worked out well for her. She was initially stopped because of her irregular driving, which raised concerns about possible intoxication or a need for assistance. When Officer Smith pulled Brooke over, she greeted him cheerfully. Mr. do you understand? Yes, sir. Try to hold your head still, please. Keep watching it. I need yeah, you to look I'm at watching. it. Okay, do you know your numbers? Yes, sir. Can you count backwards for me? Start at 47 and end at 32, please. 47 to 32? Yes. Um, 47, 46, 45, 40. Just do a 47 and uh, arrest start me at 46. Uh, by the the breast test is by willingness. Okay. Go ahead and turn around for me. Okay. Well, I'll read you the implied consent and you can decide for yourself. You're not going to. Brooke claimed multiple times that she had only had one beer and that she had just gotten off the phone with her baby's father, Zachary. Brooke had obviously had more than one drink, but her relationship with the police officer only improved as time went on. Go to your left. You are under arrest for driving under the influence of an intoxicating liquor or drug. The New Mexico Implied Consent Act requires you to submit to a breath test to determine the alcohol content of your blood. After you take our test, you have the right to choose an additional independent test. If you choose to take this additional independent test, you have the right to a reasonable opportunity to arrange for a physician, a licensed nurse or a laboratory technician or technologist who is employed by a hospital or physician of your own choice to perform an additional chemical test. The cost of this additional test will be paid for by the law enforcement agency, the Albuquerque Police Department. Do you agree to take our test? It will be a breath test. Constant breath. Blow constantly, hard and constantly until the machine stops making noise. Go ahead. Blue, 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 blue. Try it again. And the legal limit in the state of New Mexico is 0 .08. Your first breath score was a 0 .16, and your second was a 0 .16. You're over two times. You're at two times the legal limit. It's a little bit more than one shot. Okay. 0 .08, .08 is the the point. 0 .08. 0 .08 is the legal limit. You are going to be transported out to MDC where you'll be booked for DWI. You're also going to be booked for failed to maintain a traffic lane, uh, failed to obey a traffic control device, and for not having your proof. Brooke failed the sobriety test administered by Officer Smith, resulting in her arrest for DUI despite her laughter and smiles during the test. The officer remained serious throughout their conversation. We have insurance in the vehicle. Do you have any questions for me? Do I have to make a phone call? You'll be able to make a phone call once you get processed, booked, photographed, fingerprinted. Okay, turn around for me, hands back behind your back. How long? Mm, about like a year or two ago. No, how long did you fight though? Oh, I fought for 11 years. Did you ever have your nose broken? Yes. 11 years. My mom took me to stand up for myself and bullying. Do you want to talk to your mom? Do you want to tell her you got arrested? Mom? Yes. From boxing to bikini, huh? It's a good transition. Uh, yeah, I think you did the similar, didn't you? Yeah. I'm recording uh, too, by the way. A blood alcohol test administered to Brooke at the police station showed that her blood alcohol content was 0.4%, over twice the legal limit. 
Her license was suspended temporarily, and she had to spend the night in jail to become sober. The incident demonstrated how arrests can be conducted with dignity and respect for all those involved. This lovely meeting could have resulted in something else in another setting, but that night, fate had other intentions.